Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you that this word is going to change us this morning. We thank you that this word is given for reproof. This word has been given for impartation. This word has been given to correct us. This word is powerful, O oh God. And we thank you that this word is incorruptible. This word is quick and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And Father, even as we feast on your word this morning, our lives will never be the same again. Father, even as we hear and listen to your word, O oh God, faith will arise for the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for what your word is doing in us. The Bible says your word is that which comes out of your mouth and it will never return back to you void. The Bible says that you have sent forth your word and you healed us, oh God. And we will never be the same again because your word is anointed. Your word is powerful. Your word, oh God, has got self-fulfilling power in it in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that even as our hearts are ready to hear your word, and Father, our lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise and we give you the honor and it's in the name of of Jesus is in the name of the one that died and rose again in Jesus name come on somebody say amen this morning come on somebody say amen this morning hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the Lord amen hallelujah if we just think about what Jesus did man it's it's so powerful sometimes we we forget of what God has done in our lives you know, and we think that because of our strength, because of our might, because of whatever we are doing, you know, we are where we are today. But hey, let me remind you this morning that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God in your life. You know, God has been good to you. Somebody say, God has been good to me. Somebody say, God has been good to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Well, Women's Conference is coming. And we hope and we believe that all of you here, especially the ladies, you know, you are going to invite somebody else. Come on, somebody say, I am ready for the women's conference. Come on, ladies. I am ready for the women's conference. And I will invite somebody to be part of that conference. In Jesus' name. Amen. Husbands and brothers, say, we will, come on gentlemen, say, we will support our ladies in our church. Come on somebody, I don't hear that, that bass, you know, when I hear that kind of voice, you know. Come on gentlemen, say, we will, that's better, you know, but it's only from the end portion of that. So are there no men on the other side there? Come on. We will support the women's conference in every way that we can, especially where finances are concerned. Come on, somebody. Say amen. You see what I'm talking about, gentlemen? I mean, when you, when you speak finances, they come alive. Amen. Come on they come alive amen so it's important that you know we we support each and every one of us and uh, you know this is our church this is the best church in the world and I believe that you know what makes us best and what makes us you know a unique church and a church for people like you is because you know of the unity in this church and we want to see us you know holding each other up and holding you know, and helping each other, whether it's, you know, SDY conference or women's conference or men's conference, you know, let's make sure that we invite and help whichever way we can. Now, let me say this to single brothers, if you're single here, and, um, you know, come on, brothers, if you're single, and there has been a, a lady born again, filled by the Spirit of God that you've been eyeing, for the longest of time, you know, and, um, you know, uh, and, and you, you, you have seen her that she has not been very uh, consistent where coming to church is concerned. This is the time to say, listen, I'll pay for you. I, I, know, I know ladies, man, and just say to her, I'll pay for you. Uh, I will, you know, I will donate in that church and then make sure that you come to, to the women's conference. They will come, I tell you now. They will come. 
Or you put that seed, put that seed up and just say, you know, take, take 50,000 rands and just say, in the name of Jesus. Take it out and say, in the name of Jesus, Father, even as I plant this seed, I pray that that woman of my dreams that I've been believing God for, I pray that you bring her on my path, that she may see me, that I may see her. And then when I see her, I know that it is her. You know, and that miracle will come even as you plant that seed. Can I have an amen, gentlemen? Can I have an amen? The ladies are even helping you to say amen because they know that that's how it works. Amen. What do you have in your hand, Mr. Malu, like I said? What do you have? What do you have? Put it on the ground and you'll see what God will do in your life. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm a witness. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Are you excited that you are in the presence of God this morning? Amen. Amen. I want you to hold your Bible and say, this is my Bible. I have what he says I have. I am what he says I am. And I can do what he says I can do. I am a believer. I believe the word of God. And this word is true in my life. Come on, somebody, wave your Bible in the air. Make the devil nervous this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews, the 6th chapter. I want to read verse 10 all the way down to verse 12. And I'm probably going to jump to a couple of other verses after that. And I believe that God is going to speak to us this morning in such a unique way. Say, I am ready to receive the word of God. Verse 10, it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And I said to you last week that, you know, God will always remember that which you do in his kingdom and for his work. We spoke about Cornelius, and I said, the Bible says that, you know, the prayers of Cornelius and the gifts that Cornelius would give to those who were without, the scripture says that they came as a memorial before God himself. So the Bible says God does not forget. Your friend does forget. You know, your parents do forget. You know, your spouse do forget. But God does not forget. Tell your neighbor, say, God does not forget. You know, you might have prayed prayers in 2001. God has not forgotten those prayers. God has not forgotten, you know, what you have done for his kingdom. God has not forgotten the seeds that you have given. You know, many of you have been giving sacrificially for the longest of time. I'm here to tell you that God does not forget. You know, he's a faithful God. He's a God that does not forget, you know, the righteous work or the work and the labor of love that you have shown. Verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. The Bible says be diligent. Don't do things in the kingdom of God as a one-time seed. Don't give, you know, your gifts or don't give your love. Don't give, you know, your, your time and energy or whatever it is just as a one-time gift. The Bible says that we have to be diligent with these things. You know, Makutle, don't play the keyboard once as a, because there is an event at church. You have to be diligent all the time because when you do it diligently, you know, there is a reward that waits, awaits for you. The Bible says that God, you know, rewards those that are diligent in their approach to life. Can I have an amen? amen. Say, I am amen. a diligent amen. believer. Come on, somebody say, I am amen. diligent amen. in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says that, you know, every one of you have to show the same diligence. What diligence? The diligence of, you know, doing and showing, you know, the labor of love. We have to be diligent at all times. In verse 12, he says, and do not be lazy. Tell your neighbor, say, he's not talking about you this time. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, in case, just in case, do not be lazy. 
I can see, I can hear some of you in your heart, you're sitting next to your husband or your wife, she says, I've been meaning to say this, Pastor George, thank you so much for listening to the Spirit of God. Do not be lazy. You're even showing your spouse a finger. Do not be lazy. So the Bible says that we may not be slothful, we may not be lazy, but followers, followers, say, I am a follower. Say, I am a follower of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So the Bible is saying to us that, you know, no laziness in our lives, but the presence of faith and the presence of patience will then catapult us in, uh, catapult us in, what's the English word? It will take us to our promises. That's the easier one. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So when we are not lazy, when we are not slothful, when we are walking by faith and not by sight, and when we apply the force of patience, the Bible says we shall inherit the promises. Say amen, somebody. So if we are to inherit the promises, we have to apply all these principles, you know, and not just pick and choose which principle you want to apply in your life. You know, some people say, Pastor George, you don't understand. I am a man of faith. I am a woman of faith. You know, I walk by faith and not by sight. You know, uh, 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 the Bible says the just shall live by faith. That's all well and good. But faith alone, if it's not accompanied with the force of patience, is not going to bring results in your life. Can I have an amen? amen. Patience and faith are twins. They are twins. They are identical twins. They have to be applied all at the same time. I said to you last week, I have been a Christian for a long time, and I have come to the conclusion that, you know, God does not necessarily all the time come immediately when I pray and I seek his face. What do I mean by that? The, the actual manifestation of what I'm praying for or the solution that I'm looking for does not always come suddenly. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? So there are times when I pray, it will take about three weeks or four weeks or one month or three years or five years or ten years before I see the solution or the answers to what I've been praying for. Do I have a witness in this church here? So the Bible says, you know, while you are believing God for something, you have to apply the force of patience. Because patience is what will keep the door of faith open in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Faith says, I have it. But patience says, even if I don't have the tangible material of it, but I am willing to wait so that, you know, that which I have is going to manifest in my life. Can I have an amen? amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say a better amen this morning. So the Bible says that we have to be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. God is not withholding his promises away from you. I've had people say, but Pastor George, you know, where was God, you know, uh, when I was going through this? I've had people say, but Pastor George, you know, I've been saving God for 67 years and I've not seen the promises of God come in your life. You need to be checking your life. Have you been applying the force of patience? Have you been applying faith in your life? Because the Bible says if we follow those who through faith and patience walked, we are going to inherit the promises. Can I have an amen this morning? Say, I am a faith woman or a faith man. And I walk in patience, and I inherit the promises of God. So God is not withholding anything from you. God loves you too much, you know, to withhold stuff from you. Oh, but Pastor George, you know, I've seen God bless others. We even sing songs, even as you bless others, please do not pass me by. God is not passing you by. Sing Peter when I at the heart. Don't pass me by. Kumbayam, kumbayam. Come by here, Lord. Come by here, oh God. Even as you bless Mr. Makubedu, 
come please bless me. Please, please God. And we're making God as if he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, some kind of a monster that needs to be begged 77 times before he can do something. The Bible says he has already given us all these promises. And all we got to do is to walk by faith and patience and then we will inherit the promises. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The promises are there. God is not hiding anything from you. Tell your neighbor, say, he's talking about you this time around. God is not hiding any promises from you. Grace, come on somebody, grace has provided. Grace is a person. The person of Jesus is grace. Grace has already provided everything that you have ever needed and everything that you will need in the future. But faith is that invisible hand that will receive, you know, the promises of God. But how you receive them, even if you know that they are there for you, but you have not arrived as, uh, to them as yet, you have to apply the force of patience. Say amen, somebody. Say amen. amen. Last week I said to you that faith is the access key to the promises of God. But patience is what will keep that door open. Faith is the bridge that takes you to where you want to be. Patience is the pillar and the foundations that keeps your faith floating. Are you hearing what I'm saying, house of faith? Is it simmering right now? Is it coming now nicely in your heart? Faith is that bridge that connects you to your promise. But patience is the foundation and it's also the pillars that holds this bridge of faith that is taking you to your promise. And so you cannot operate in one and not apply the other. Faith is important. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith four times in the Bible. The Bible says that you and I need to live by faith. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. But faith in itself has got brothers and sisters that accompanies it. Faith does not work by itself. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, the Bible says the fig tree dried up at the root. But it took 24 hours when the disciples came back to realize, oh my goodness, that which Jesus spoke at has come to pass. So there are times that God, because he's working in the inside of you, he wants you to apply some patience. So that when patience has come to maturity, then you have some character with you. Can I have an amen? amen. God wants to develop character in you. I said God wants to develop character in the inside of you. Amen. Some of you, you need some cooking before you can receive the stuff that you need. Some of you, before you receive that money, God needs to cook you a little bit. Because your heart is not in the right place. So we have to correct your heart. We have to unscrew certain screws in your heart so that you are in the right place so that when the manifestation of the promises of God comes in your life, then you will not have your nose going up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say amen, somebody. I'm preaching better than you saying amen this morning. So God wants us to walk in faith, but at the same time to apply the force of patience. Faith is important because the Bible says it promises a great reward in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. So it is important for us to spend time in God's word so that we can develop this faith. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible says that faith comes. It comes. Faith comes. Tell your neighbor, say faith comes. Faith comes to everyone who spends time in the word of God and hearing the word of God. Faith is not for a selected few. The same way as prosperity is not for a selected few. The promises of God are not for those who are, you know, as handsome as me. Come on, somebody. The promises of God are not just for a specific grouping of people, but the promises of God are for each and every single one of us in this place. I don't care what they said to you. I don't care, you know, if people have said stuff at you and they said, you know, you are worth nothing, but the promises of God are there for you. But how do you receive those promises? The Bible says you receive those promises by faith through patience. 
faith and patience. Faith and patience. Patience must be applied to your faith so that you can receive the promises of God. Now, I said to you last week that the word patience means longevity. The word patience means persistence, staying power, persistence, persistence. You know, we live in a world where people want things to happen quick, 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 quick. That's why businesses that have got a drive-through thing on it, you know, they make good money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we are a generation of instant milk, instant butter, instant oats, instant this, instant that. But how many in this church know that a good meal takes time to prepare? Can I have an amen in this church? Can I have an amen in this church? How many know that, you know, when you buy spinach somewhere at, you know, I don't know, whatever shop you buy it from, tastes different than the one that you are standing on the stove and you're preparing yourself? Am I the only one in this church here that know what I'm talking about? When you have that pot simmering, and you go and you put tomato in there. I don't know if you can put tomato in spinach, but that's, you know, some people do that. You put tomato in there. Then you go aromat in there. Come on, somebody. Then you go raja in there. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And then you pour some water and then you put that lid on and you go tuk, 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 in there. By the time you take it out after some time and then you, you take the spoon before you even eat it and then you, you do this on the spoon. Then you taste it. How many know what I'm talking about in this church? <laughs> it tastes different. You know why? Because at whatever shop when you buy, you know, spinach is probably, you know, pre-cooked or whatever it is and then it doesn't taste the same way. And God is saying, I have a miracle for you. I know it might be taking some time. Come on, somebody. But it is simmering. It is simmering. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said it is simmering. Yes. The Bible says he will, do, he will do greater and mighty things in your life. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you have asked or thought. Because he's been cooking a better miracle for you. I don't know what you believe in God for this morning. I don't know what you've been waiting for. Maybe some of you have been waiting for three years. Maybe some of you have been waiting for the longest of time. Lord, when are you going to do this? I have a word for you this morning that God has been cooking a better meal. It's not instant, but it needed to take some time. It's like mala, let me hold you. You have to allow it to simmer in there because when it comes out of that pot, it will be tasting better and nice in Jesus name can I have an amen? amen so it takes some longevity it takes some persistence stay in power and I said to you that the kingdom of God is not for the quitters you will have to go for gold be willing to wait have you ever heard this English saying that says good things come to those who do what wait so the question is why are you not wanting to be patient patient with God and by the way God is not like you know your friend who makes you wait and they don't come and they don't show up how many know those friends that I'm talking about this one God is not like you know your 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 whatever your family member that promises you to stuff every year in December they're promising you the same thing. But it never manifests. It never happens. But when God promises you something, he will bring it to pass. Why? The Bible says he's not the son of man that should lie. The Bible says he will do what he said he will do. The Bible says, you know, his promises are yes and they are amen. They will come to pass in your life. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It's coming your way. 
Your miracle is coming your way. It's just a matter of time. You know, your blessing is coming your way. It's just a matter of time. Your breakthrough is coming your way. It's just a matter of time. You know, your, your, your prosperity is coming your way. It's just a matter of time. Your health will spring forth. It's just a matter of time. Whatever it is that you believe in God for, it's just a matter of time because God is cooking something nice for you. Say amen, somebody. But we have to have the force of patience what others call thick skin. You have to be willing to wait. Let me tell you, when you're waiting, there will be forces of darkness that comes your way. When you're waiting, there will be storms that pushes you. You're waiting for God, but there is a push on the right-hand side. There's a push on your left-hand side. There's a push from the top. There's a push from the front. There's a push from the back. You've been pushed. What do you do? Somebody said, what do you do between amen and there it is? What do you do after you have said amen and then there it is, that which you've been praying for? What do you do? And what you do there is applying the force of patience. Now, patience also is not just putting up with something. Because there are people who say, Pastor George, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I, I, I really don't know, but I'm, I'm waiting. No. That's not how you wait. That's not how you wait. Pastor George, I'm waiting because, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, everyone is saying I need to wait. No, no, no. It will not manifest in your life. Biblical patience and biblical waiting says, you know what? I might not have the physical manifestation of what I'm trusting God for, but Lord, thank you in the name of Jesus. Waiting in the Lord, you know, involves praise and worship to God. You say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that my, my health is okay in the name of Jesus. And then on Monday, you still have, you know, the pain. You say, Lord, thank you. That's biblical waiting. On Tuesday, you have the same pain. On Wednesday, you have the same pain. On Thursday, you have the same pain. Come Sunday, the next week, you have the same pain. What do you do? You say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. That's what we call waiting upon the Lord. Say amen. amen. Persistence. And I have lived for some time to know those that are persistent and those that are willing to wait are those that will always experience the miracles of God. Now let me tell you what Kenneth Hagin said. Kenneth Hagin Sr. said these words. He says, the longer you are willing to wait, the quicker the miracle will come. The longer you are willing to wait, the quicker the miracle will come. But if you are not willing to wait, you will always, you know, <laughs> believe that someday something will happen. But if you tell the devil, hey, listen, Satan, you might as well just give up here because I'm willing to wait. You bring it on. 30 years it doesn't mean anything to me. 20 doesn't mean anything to me. Oksalayo is what I'm going to have, what I said, uh, you know, what God said I can have. Na, 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 na. You, you say that to the devil, and when you say that, you frustrate him. Say amen, somebody. How many believers do we have here that are willing to wait on God this morning? I don't know. I don't know what you've been believing God for. Some of you have been believing God for a job. You've been believing God for a better job. You don't like the job you're in right now. You say, Lord, I need a better job. And you've been believing God for this job for 18 months. For a better job for 18 months. And things don't seem to be shaping up. As a matter of fact, you're having regret letters every day. What do you do? Do you say, Lord, cartel him in a match? You say, Lord, thank you for that better job. I might not have this one, but there's another one better than this one that is coming my way. Come on, somebody. I, I, I might not have this one here, but there is a better one that is coming my way. Hallelujah. I might not have gotten this one, but I know that God is doing something way much better. Maybe God has looked at your heart, you're believing him for stuff this size, and God says, I've got this big something for you, and yet you are believing me for this. And he says, listen, wait, I'm going to give you this. I don't know about you, but I'd rather wait for this than, you know, rush for this. Some of you are rushing for crumbs, and God says, I've got the whole bakery for you. Come on, somebody. 
you know, you're wanting quarter, but God says, you know, get out of the quarter mentality. I've got loaves, you know, for you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. But that will happen when you wait. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Waiting and patience involves willing to stand forever. In Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 13, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to do what? Having done all to do what? He says, having done everything, stand. Some of you have been saying, Pastor George, I've been waiting, I've been waiting, I've been waiting, what should I do? You've been even wanting to find a second opinion. Have you ever had a situation where God tells you not to wait, or maybe, you know, something is not happening right, and say, hey, Nkambe, I need to get a second opinion. That's why some people go to Amazon Go, because you want a second opinion. People go to, you know, some other people. I need to know, man. I need to know, I need to know. It's been three months. My things are not coming together. Am I talking to real black people here who know things that are not coming together? My things are not coming together here. I need to know from somebody. Then you hear that Um Samaria is coming on the other side of town. Then you go there and Um Samaria can see that, you know, there is, uh, there is desperation in you. And then they can just tell you whatever they want to tell you. And then they know that you will eat the, at the palm of their hand. Especially as black people, sometimes, you know, we have a lot of people that play on our desperation. We're gullible. Gullible. If someone can just tell you that next week, this time, that car that they've been wanting, I see, I see there's a tall man I don't see his face properly, but he looks like he's white. And he's driving. That car has got your name on it. It says on that name, Rosina. Uh, I'm telling you, people will be gullible. They will do whatever it takes. But when you know that God said, I will do it for you, you are willing to stand. And not only just stand once, but you're willing to stand forever. Having done all to stand. No patience, no promise. No patience, no promise. Like a marathon runner, you have to buckle down and find your pace. I wish I can, you know, just say that these things happen quickly like that. The same with ministry. You have to pace yourself. My wife had taught me how to pace myself, even when running is concerned. When she runs, she just goes like this, slowly. I mean, because I'm used to number one. I feel like I'm not running. I feel like, you know, I want to go this. But what happens after five Ks or so, the very same one was going like this. They're coming. And what happened to the sprinter, George Musena? You know, he's walking now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we got to be like marathon runners even where the journey of faith is concerned. We need to pace ourselves. You need to say, you know what? We know that what God said it is true and I'm going. And I'm going. And I'm going. I always say this in this church. And I said, you got to keep walking. You know, like Johnny Walker that says keep on walking right there on that bottle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to keep on running or keep on walking. Find your pace. Buckle down and find your pace. As you are waiting and as you're applying the force of patience, trouble is going to come your way. However, you don't allow the troubles and the, the, the heat tides and the Philistines and all kinds of tides in your life to come and overcome you. You stay on the word. You fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You consider the word of God as final authority in your life. You say the word stands and I'm not going to change from this stance in Jesus' name. Say amen. You have to be willing to stand forever. You 
have to be willing to stand forever. The Bible says in James chapter 1, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let have patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So you've got to allow God to help you to stand and stand forever. Patience, and I want to close with this, patience is the ability to hold up under pressure. Even when you are under pressure, you have to hold up. You have to hold up. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that patience will bring forth experience. And experience will bring forth hope. And hope does not make you ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Patience will bring forth experience. And as you're walking in patience, and as you're allowing God to help you, you're going to experience greater and mighty things in your life. I don't know who this message is for this morning, but I believe that God wants you to employ patience in your life. Be patient. Patient with your children. Patient with each other. Patient with your spouse. Come on, somebody. I know that she, you know, she might not be putting up makeup properly, but be patient with her. She's on social media. She will, she will know how to do it. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I, I know that, you know, he, he, he does not have six-pack. Come on, wait on him. It will go from, you know, one pack to three pack. At least we go in there. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know your child is not the brightest at school. Come on, give them time. Give them time. You know, some of them, you know, they are not the brightest when they're still young, but, you know, matric is coming or high school is coming. Give them time. Somebody has been patient with you. Look at you with your smart self. God has been patient with you. Look at you today. You are 37 years of age because God has been patient with you. You remember what you did on that night in 2007. Come on, somebody. I'm prophesying right now. Now, are you hearing what I'm saying? But God has been patient with you. You know, you know, you are with your nasty self. You've been nasty to everybody. You know, everyone does not like you. You know, you are just bad and, you know, and no one. But God has been patient with you. Even when your friends and your family members have told you that you are a mean person, but God has been patient with you. Even when people are not patient with you anymore, but there is still somebody, you know, who's sticking with you. And we can be patient with other people. We can be patient with our neighbors. We can be patient with the ones that are sitting next to you. You know, you can't allow the spirit of offense to run you out of this church because you cannot be patient with this brother that is always eyeing you at the church when the worship is on. Come on, I'm not saying that brothers should do that. I can't stand him, Pastor George. I can't stand him. Every time, you know, I'm trying to sit on the other side of the church. Nah, he move. He come, he's coming on the other side. He's forever looking at me. I cannot be part of this church. No, be patient. God is working in that inside of that person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Instead, you know, you just need to be praying and say, I pray for his eyes. Oh, come on. But I kiss, I pray for his eyes, Lord. Let his eyes look somewhere else. Or maybe you need to be praying, Lord, work in me. I'm not seeing what he's seeing. Amen. I don't know why I'm talking about a relationship so much now. You know, maybe there's someone, there's a Genesis chapter 2 verse uh, 8 that is coming in this church here. <laughs> Amen. But be willing to wait. As you wait on God, he will not disappoint you. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I'm for you. I'm playing for your team. I'm not against you. God is saying, I'm for you. Yes, I know that you're broken, but I'm for you. 
Yes, I know that they have said stuff about you. I am for you. Yes, you messed up yesterday, but I am for you. Yes, you did the things that I don't like, but I am for you. And that's the kind of God we serve. And you and I have the DNA of God in the inside of God. And if we are the children of the Most High God and He's patient with us, we need to also show some patience for other people. Can I have an amen? Otherwise, whose child are you? Whose child are you if you're not patient? Because your father, the Bible says he created the heavens and the earth by faith. And not only did he create it by faith, but he's patient. He's patient with you. With every eye closed and every head bowed. God is patient with you this morning. Maybe you've been running away from God for the longest of time. You've been putting away godly things. You even just come into church because your mother has been phoning you to tell you, you need to go to church. You've been running away from God, but God has been patient with you. But the Bible says that this is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Don't run away anymore. Jesus says, I love you so much. I have been patient with you so that you can receive me as your Lord and your Savior. He is saying, the door has been open. I've been waiting for you. And if you are here and you know deep down in your heart that you have never said yes to Jesus, he is saying, my hands are wide open. My arms are wide open. And I want to bless you. I want to accept you. He has been waiting for you. He has been patient with you. So today, if you are here, and you know deep down in your heart that you have never said yes to Jesus, you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today you can accept him. You can, you can, you can open up your heart and he will come and dine with you. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. He has been knocking. Not only today, but he has been knocking. He has been knocking when you were 15 years of age. He has been knocking when you were 17. He has been knocking when you were 20. He has been knocking. And today, if you want to inherit the promise of everlasting life, it's by giving your life to Jesus. If you are here this morning and you say, Pastor George, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be born again. Raise up your hand wherever you are. If you are here, you say, Pastor George, please pray with me. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He has been waiting for you. Raise up your hand. He's patient with you. Raise up your hand. If you say, Pastor George, please pray with me. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yes, I go to church, but I know I'm not a believer. I know that I'm not a Christian. Raise up your hand. Is there a hand there? I can see that hand. God bless you. Raise up your hand. Don't be ashamed. Jesus is not ashamed of you. Jesus died for you publicly. You can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior publicly today. He will come and dine with you because he loves you so much. He wants, to spend, he wants you to spend eternity with him. He wants you to have the keys to heaven. And how do we do that? We do that by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Raise up your hand if there's anybody who wants to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in this place. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask the congregation to please stand up on your feet, everyone. And I'm going to ask my sister, with, together with the ushers, Sister Yeho, if you can just come with my sister. Ask my sister to come, even as they receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Come on, house of faith, we can do better than that. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Come, my sister, just come and stand right here. Come and stand right here, and you just face me. Many, many years ago, when I was 17 years of age, now I was in high school at the time, and a preacher just like me made an altar call and said, is there anybody who wants to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? And on that day, you know, I used to go to the Dutch Reformed Church. I grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church. I knew the songs. I knew everything. I knew the prayers. But I knew that as much as I am in the garage, I'm not a car. As much as I am in the soap factory, but I'm not clean, I needed to apply that soap. And when the preacher said to me on that day, who wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? I raised up my hand. I was the only person, just like you. 
I was the only person. I raised up my hand, and I said, Jesus, come into my heart and change me and make me a, a new creation. And from that day up until to this day, my life turned around, and I've seen the goodness of the Lord in my life. And that's what he's going to do for you. You know, God is no respecter of person. If he was good to George Mussina, if he was good to Nomsa, if he was good to everybody in this church here, he will be good to you because he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to come and die for you. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you today. The same prayer that that preacher prayed for me, I want to pray for you today. And after this prayer, the Bible says you will be brand new. You will be born again. It doesn't matter what your past was like. It doesn't matter what you carried from the past. But the Bible says on this day, your life will be changed completely in Jesus' name. Is that okay if I pray with you that prayer? So I want you to raise both your hands. I want you, my sister, to raise up your hands to heaven as a sign of surrender. Raise up your hands to heaven. And those of you who are in the congregation, please stretch forth your hands towards my sister here. And I want you to follow me as I pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that you have given me. Thank you for loving me that you gave your only begotten son to come and die for me. And today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past. And today, I pray that you cleanse me and make me whole. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me and making me a brand new person. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody get excited in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now this is what the Bible says. The Bible says you are born again brand new from the box. The old is gone. You are a new creation in God in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says there is great jubilation in heaven. And I know Abbas Alon and Alpha, maybe some of them are not clapping, but they don't have a revelation of what is happening in heaven. What is happening in heaven right now, Abu Kita, you know, the Apostle Paul, John, everyone else that is in heaven right now, they are clapping and say, well done thou good and faithful seven because they understand they understand what has just happened to you so this is what we're going to do you know we're going to take you to a place of prayer there is a sister there that is standing there her name is Sophia Mudivedi she's going to take you to a place of prayer she's going to give you some material now that you're born again what do you need to do welcome to the family of God in Jesus name amen now I want to pray for you I just want to pray for you I want to pray for you right now Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sister. I pray that, Lord, you may strengthen her, even as she walks this journey. I pray that, God, you may guide her. Father, whatever the enemy has been wanting to do in her life, it's stopping today in the name of Jesus. Satan, she does not belong to you anymore. She is a child of God. She belongs to God. The Bible says, behold, the old is gone. The new has come in Jesus' name. And everything that pertains to life and godliness is hers in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my sister. If you can just follow her. If you can just follow her. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, house of faith. Let's give God... Uh, you didn't speak about me, uh, the numbers, uh... I'm gonna say, okay. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. The Bible says that he that findeth a wife finds a good thing. She's my good thing right there. Amen. Um, just for a moment, you know, last week um, we received uh, the Bid and sour news. Uh, what do they call it? A uh, sweet and sour. Sweet and sour news. Last week, um, one of our members in this church here um, lost her mother. I mean, his mother. And um, it's good news because, you know, before she passed on, she accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And that's good news because we know where she is. And it's sour news because we're going to miss her. You know, she has been the queen mother of 
you know, Mr. Begame Bagnube, who's here, is right there uh, with us, and um, and we rallied around him as men of faith, and I gave him a call just to give him some comfort. The Bible says our God is the God of all comfort. It's the God that is able to comfort us. And Mr. Agnube, I want to just say to you that we are with you as a family. This is your family here. We are with you. We're praying for you. And we're supporting you. We're standing with you. Whatever it is that we need to do as a church, we're going to do that for you. But most importantly, you know, what we can give you is prayer. Our best gift that we can ever give you is prayer. So at this time, I want us to, those that are standing next to Mr. Agnube there, Mr. Agnube, if you can just raise up your hand so that people can see you. If you're standing next to him, please just lay your hand. My brother, you can just lay your hand next to him. And we, the rest of us, we can just stretch forth our hands towards him as I pray for his family. And we're going to use him as a point of contact. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're the God of all comfort. You're the God that is able, O oh God, to comfort us. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that even if we don't understand certain things, but Lord, you give us peace in the midst of the storm. Father, I pray that you may shower him with your peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard his heart and his mind. I thank you that his family will receive the same peace even as he's receiving it today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're the God that never fails us, you're the God that is always with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 So um, I believe, Mr. Nube, the, the details about burial and all of that will be given to us. Have you already? Mr. Skonde has got those details. When is the, the next week, Saturday, uh, we will be communicating with the, with the church and we're really going to be supporting, you know, Mr. Nube uh, in Alex. Uh, that's, they're in Alexander, yes. So we'll be supporting them in Alex, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you raise up your hands as I speak a blessing? And I'm told that please don't rush home. There's just a quick announcement that Mr. Mukubedi and the team wants to do. And please don't rush home quickly after this. Amen. Raise up your hands. Let me speak a blessing upon your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Please just wait.